So, you've managed to finish your first life through the model, and somewhere along the way, you've managed to improve yourself as a rigger and as an artist. And as a result, you'd like to redo certain aspects. Um, if you want to redo your rigging, that's fairly simple. And you just go straight into cubism and redo parts of the rig that you want. For the art though, you're going to want to re-import the Photoshop file into the Live 2D. And here I'm going to cover um, just how to do that and some of the pitfalls and considerations you'd want to make when you're um, importing a Photoshop file in because it needs to be done in a very specific way. Now the reasons you may want to re-import uh, a Photoshop file in and just re-import your entire art in um, can um, vary for depending on what you'd like. Like in some cases, you may maybe you're still doing the rigging and you need to fix a specific layer. Maybe a chunk of it is missing, um, maybe there's a mistake, or you want to add or remove something to that specific layer. Um, in other cases, you want to reuse your model and um, retain 80 or 90% of the rigging work that you've already done. Um, after all, you've already done a full humanoid model, and that's probably going to be your character design, so what's wrong with adding an extra costume here and there, when it's still going to use most of the same rigging work that you've already done? And uh, I've done that kind of thing myself, and I've slowly improved on my own model over time. So how exactly do we do that? Well, first of all, let's go back to our original cat here and make a few variations here. And it's just going to be really simple stuff. Let's, uh, let's um, recolor this cat a bit. Just make him a little bit brighter with the paint bucket, just to make it a bit obvious. So let's say that you just wanted to change the colors a bit, you know, that's really simple. Um, so the, the main thing to consider here is to retain all of the layers and its names. Um, so in order to make sure that the re-import process can work, um, all of these layers need to match up. So let's export this to a Photoshop file and then proceed to drag it in. And this dialog comes up. Now here it's going to tell you uh, what you want to do with the Photoshop file. The first option is obviously to just make a new model entirely, but here you can pick um, the overwrite. So you can pick uh, this specific model and then you need to select the Photoshop file that you want to re uh, overwrite that's already inside the project file. So let's select that. And, and the name there was the original Photoshop file. And what it overwrote exactly can be seen in the project tab over here under source image. And that's, uh, you can see an indicator here that it's been replaced. So uh, under that name there, you can see that demo.psd was the original file. And this is the new one. And in fact, all of these files in the original Photoshop file are retained. Um, they're not overwritten per se, but they are replaced. Um, and it does this rather intelligently by trying to match up the layer names of these layers um, according to the layers that you put in the Photoshop file itself. So these names here need to match up exactly with these names here. Um, all of these are marked as unused, so what you really want to do at this point is to clean this up just by right-clicking this and either deleting unused layers or pressing delete entirely. Since all of these are unused now, you can press delete unused layers and it wipes everything out, or you may want to delete this entirely. So let's press Ctrl Z a couple of times to undo that. So uh, what are some things to consider here? Um, first off, um, if there is a layer where the name does not match up, it'll create a new layer entirely and you can rig it. So this can be done for, say, accessories and stuff like that. So let's draw a monocle um, real quick by just drawing um, a little golden circle here. Just in the fancy chain. I think my cat looks a little sickly with that pale blue color. Um, but uh, yeah, let's 
we export this to the same Photoshop file we can see there. And drag it back in. Now, ideally, you would be making multiple files here. Um, in this, for this demonstration, I'm just overriding the same thing. Um, but um, well, yeah. <laughs> to make sure you don't accidentally delete stuff, uh, you should be making multiple files. So let's replace that. You can see here um, that the monocle has been added in the exact position that it was in in the art file. Um, and when that happens over in the part list, there's going to be a new folder added here indicating that there was no matchup. So it's just going to add it as brand new. And again, you should clean this up by taking it out of the folder and just deleting the folder. And then you can just rig this however you want. Let's go back like that. Stick it into you know, one of the areas here. And to also remember to uh, add it to the UV mapping, just like that. And then um, you can see that it's a fairly um, deformed looking monocle. <laughs> yeah. Um, now let's say that you want to change a layer significantly. Um, so um, you want to say adjust this monocle by adjusting the position a little bit. Um, and one way you can do it is to outright change the position here in Live 2D. But um, if you change the base position of this part here, um, it can cause issues down the line because it's still going to draw from, it's still going to take from this Photoshop file and you've already set a base position here. And that's going to throw you off eventually if you set change the space position in the Live 2D. So ideally what you'd want to do is to actually just change the position of this um, over here in the Photoshop file itself. Re-export it. And then re-import it. And when this happens, when, when there's um, a similar file lined up, Live 2D will be intelligent enough to overwrite the file and also change the position a little bit. As you can see there. That said, um, it's still going to retain all of the rigging. So you're going, and you can see there that there's a little bit of clipping that's occurred. Um, so you're going to need to redo the mesh, but um, it's intelligent enough that the rigging should actually still um, be transferred across to all of the new vertices. Um, you could even rig it manually if you really wanted to. Um, but um, the issue with this is that this isn't exactly perfect. Um, so let's just press undo a couple times. Um, and um, this is good if you want to do minor positional adjustments to your live 2D um, by doing it in the Photoshop file so, the, so that your, your art file can still be a, an accurate base with all the layers in the correct position. Um, However, Live2D is smart enough to recognize if um, an item is in a radically different position. So let's say that you have the monocle over here for some reason, like on the cat's ear. It's, I guess it's a bit of an earring now. Um, and uh, let's say, let's try importing this in. Let's export there. And let's see what happens if I do this. And overwrite. So here, the overriding actually does not work, um, and the old monocle file is retained here. Um, so there is there are in fact two layers now with um, the same name and duplicated. And uh, this is something to watch out for when you're trying to constantly re-import your Photoshop file, and. The reason this happens, uh, from what I can tell, is because this um, new layer is in a very radically different position from the original, to the point where there's actually no overlap with the rigging here at all. And um, the program is smart enough to um, guess that this is, even though this is a new layer, 
with the same name, it's actually a completely different one entirely. Not only that, but um, the, the live to the rigging wouldn't really transfer over correctly. Um, in the case that this is not a mistake, um, well, in, in the case that the program is making a mistake and you did actually want to overwrite this, there is a manual way for you to override this. And to do that, what you do is first you select the layer that you want to overwritten, go to the project file, and then right click on the specific layer in the Photoshop file that was meant to be replaced. And then you press apply to selected art mesh. And now it's been replaced entirely. It's a little bit confusing to see here because that new layer is actually still there. So we delete that and it's gone because, well, none of the, the meshing um, lined up. We select that and we do the mesh, just auto generate it. You can see it appear there. Um, so uh, another pitfall um, to consider is let's say that one of the things that you want to improve in your art file is to actually improve on the naming scheme of all of these files. Um, and to that, um, let's say that this, you know, you'd like to rename this to something more precise. So it's actually an ear monocle. But if you just re import this, so if we drag this in and select that Photoshop file again, you can see it's grayed out, so it's a bit handy and timestamped. Um, it will once again create a new layer because the name doesn't match up. So we've got two monocles here again. Um, and in order to fix that, you need to change the name of this file, um, of these layers, to precisely match up. So let's do a bit of cleanup here first. That, unuse layer, delete that. So what you want to do is to actually rename these layers to match up exactly what was what these are. So that's ear monocle. Let's just do a copy paste. And then in source image, under the furniture file, you actually rename the layer name here. And you press enter to confirm it. And now with the names actually matching up with each other, you can put it in and override it. And it'll once again be replaced. And you can't really see it because um, I haven't really done any cosmetic changes. Let's just do that again with a little bit of a fancy looking thing there. Export it to version 1.2. And just overwrite it. You can see that it's been overwritten entirely. So um, as you can probably see here, you can actually put multiple Photoshop files in if you so desire. So usually you would expect that you would do one live to the uh, one or one piece of art and you know drag that Photoshop file in and bring it all together. But let's say that for some reason or other um, you actually have this here, as well as um, another art file that you want to put on top of it. Um, and you can actually have multiple Photoshop files as well. And the process is more or less the same, except that it actually keeps multiple Photoshop files in here. And uh, one possible reason for this might just be management purposes, right? So you might have um, the cat here, but only as a single layer that's unriggable and it's there as reference. Maybe you want to like clean up your file or something like that and keep it clean and all your layers clean, but you still want to draw the accessory on top. So let's do a little bit of a crown. And color that in. Call that crown. Now, after remembering to delete the body because that's unriggable, you have nothing but extra components here, right? And um, from here, you can again 
export it, and then I proceed to drag it in. Let's drag that in. Demo, and you can just register everything as brand new, or replace something old if you really wanted to. And now you have two Photoshop files as reference. Um, that's extra stuff, so I, that probably should have been deleted during the uh, the process. But um, all in all, um, that's how you can have multiple Photoshop files as well. And it's not really different. Um, you just need to make sure your names are separate. Finally, let's say that you have two Photoshop files here inside your Live 3D project. Going back to our original demo file, let's just add these as a new art mesh again. And for some reason or other, you need to do an update for multiple parts that are across several Photoshop files. Say that you want to update the ear monocle, which is a bit weird looking, and the face as well. But you can't do that because you can only overwrite one Photoshop file at a time here when you're dragging something in. So what you can do from here is you can actually just rearrange the layers inside the project now. You can actually put this into a different Photoshop file entirely. And then clean this up because this is a bit of a mistake. This is just a static picture. Use this reference. I can just delete that entirely. Um, go through that warning because um, there's already something on the canvas. You don't really see it there. And now we have these two components as part of the main Photoshop file. And that's one other possible thing you can do when you're trying to clean up all your Photoshop source files. Say, for example, here, you're trying to bring these layers over into the main file after you've drawn them independently. And uh, for some reason, you're just bringing them into the live to as you go. And here we can do a full overwrite now if we really so want to and just keep progressing further. You can even export this out to a Photoshop file itself if you so desire. There's a beta option here if you right click on it. And this could be very useful if um, you've e ended up assembling your live CD file from a lot of different sources, such as multiple Photoshop files and individual PNGs, and you really want to unite all of those files together somehow. Let's call that export. And then we can open that up. And you can see there that uh, it's all here, and all the layers are here in an individual file. So all in all, Live3D supports a few different situations uh, when it comes to importing Photoshop files in, beyond just dragging um, everything in and overriding stuff, in order to support a few different situations that you might run into regarding how you've organized your Photoshop file. For me especially, I've been doing some of this drawing separately on the separate files, or by, after merging layers together, just to manage the amount of RAM that I have. Because uh, for my own personal life today, I've actually ended up having several hundred layers, um, and that's causing some issues with the amount of RAM consumption. All in all, I hope this short tutorial has given you a few more options in how you approach your rigging process, because it doesn't necessarily need to be a linear process of making your entire art file first, and then trying to do all of your rigging with what you have. It can be a back and forth progress of iterating your rigging and your art file over time, and trying to fine tune your art to work with what you're trying to rig. That's what I've done with my Live 3D model as well, with constant small improvements as well as adding new accessories and costumes over time. If you found this useful, please feel free to leave a comment below on what you think and what you'd like to see next, and I'd love to see what you've done as well. Thanks, good luck, and have fun.